Well, hello, I have guests, visitors. It must be you. Welcome. Welcome to my home here in California. My name is Valerie, V-A-L-E-R-I-E, S-U-T-T-O-N, Valerie Sutton. And I'm the inventor of sign writing. It's a way to read and write any sign language in the world. Actually, I started out as a dancer. A lot of people ask me, are, did you have deafness in your family or did you want to become an interpreter or something of that nature? But no, actually, I never even dreamed I would ever work with deaf people when I was a little girl. I, I was interested in being a ballet dancer. Think of how many little girls love to dance. Well, I was one of them and I was lucky. My mother gave me ballet lessons and I was so happy dancing. I became somewhat of a professional dancer. I worked towards that goal, that's for sure. I worked with a, a professional company and um, trained very rigorously through my childhood towards that goal. But around age 15 or so, I started getting just a little bit not bored, but I, I started to realize that it wasn't quite for me, that professional ballet wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. I had an intellect and I wanted to try to apply it in some way to the dance profession. And I found a book at a rehearsal. We were all rehearsing to do a performance. And uh, I found a book in the dressing room. And so I opened it up and it was a book of different dance notation systems over centuries and there really have been a lot of dance notation systems hundreds of them in fact one of the most famous ones is called the Fouillet system by Raoul Fouillet that came from the courts of France and they used to write down the dances of the people who were in the courts in France <laughs> and then I noticed that there were uh, other notation systems that use scratches and lines and they were really hard to read and then there were other systems like Laban notation that uses squares and uh, kind of uh, rectangles and they go up kind of a bar and that's all very abstract and I'm sure an excellent system but it was hard for me to personally read and I was thinking gosh I'd like to have something that's easy to read something that's visual that looks a little bit like dance and I came across in this book <laughs> a notation system by Friedrich Albert Zorn Z-O-R-N is his last name, back in the middle of the 1800s and in Europe. And um, I was uh, really impressed because it was a stick figure notation system. Now, I want you to know a lot of people think that stick figures are really not sophisticated, that they are just cartoons, you know, that's not important. But actually, I disagree very much. I think that Whatever is easy for the brain to read immediately is worthwhile. And I liked stick figures if they were used in a sophisticated fashion. So I decided to, after looking at Mr. Zorn's wonderful stick figure dancers running across a page, then maybe I could take that concept and evolve it into a way to actually read and write dance, all body movement, easily and visually, a little bit like um, little frames in a, in a movie. You know, movie frames, you know how they go across and the camera reads that? Well, imagine if you had stick figures representing body movement. So that's what I got involved with. I called that Sutton Dance Writing, and it's a way to read and write the body while you're dancing in ballet. And I put it on a five-line staff under music, and I also got very influenced by Walt Disney. You know, here in Southern California, there's Disneyland. Uh -huh. And we all love Disneyland. And as you know, Walt Disney created big movies, Disney movies, like cartoons that were really sophisticated, like uh, Sleeping Beauty and Cinderella and, oh, so many beautiful cartoon movies. So I love those, and I thought, gosh, I'd like to do that kind of animation with writing body movement. So then I went to Denmark when I was 19 years old. I moved to Denmark. I have no Danish in my family. It simply was that in the professional world of ballet, 
uh, the Royal Danish Ballet is very famous. It's a little bit like Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C., or I'm sure you have very famous institutions in Brazil, too, that are, you know, very important, like the University of Sao Paulo and different places like that. Well, the Royal Danish Ballet, for me, was a great honor. I loved the idea of my living in Denmark, and I trained with teachers from the Royal Danish Ballet, and I learned their ballet system of training for dancers called the Bornenveil Schools. Bornenveil was a real person. That was his last name, August Bornenveil. And he was the director of the Royal Danish Ballet way back in 1832. And he developed a way to train dancers. And it was really, really famous. But they had never written it down. So I got excited. Wow, I could write down the movements of the Bournemouth schools on paper with my invention, with Sutton Dance writing. And I did. And I preserved the Royal Danish Ballet system of training. This became kind of well known in Denmark. And the Queen of Denmark contacted the uh, director of the Royal Danish Ballet. At that time was a man named Fleming Flint. And we received a letter from Fleming Flint here in California asking me to come to the Royal Danish Ballet to teach my dance writing system since I had preserved the Royal Danish Ballet system of training. Wow, what an honor for me. So in 1974, I returned to Denmark. I was there from 1970 to 1972, and then I came back in 1974 as a guest to teach at the Royal Danish Ballet. And there were some newspaper articles about my coming, this American woman, I was 23 years old, who had invented a way to read and write dance and that I had preserved the Royal Danish Ballet system of training. It was in their big time newspaper called the Berlin Skatune. And uh, somebody from the University of Copenhagen, a researcher there named Lars van der Liet, who was at the time the director of the um, audiological department for research on deafness and also sign language at the University of Copenhagen. He called me. Um, I was actually at the Royal Theater. <laughs> I taught the Royal Danish Ballet how to read and write dance every morning. And um, one morning I, I was standing in the hallway with a bunch of dancers with all their costumes on and, and it was a busy hallway, you know, and I get, yeah, hello, hello. Oh, what? You want me to write sign language? Huh? <laughs> you know, that was the conversation. I said, well, I, I know I can write body movement. I would be glad to try. Um, why don't I come see you and we'll talk about it. So I came to the University of Copenhagen, a totally different atmosphere than the Royal Danish Ballet, you can imagine. And I come to this lovely, like, almost like a library with very studious looking people. Oh, my goodness, they, books galore, right? And they were all researchers, and they were doing a research project on sign language. Now, this is 1974. This is way back in time when actually it was Dr. William Stokey. I'm sure you know about Dr. William Stokey. He was a researcher here in the United States, um, a Scottish American, I believe. And um, Dr. Stokey paved the way for researchers in the future on sign language because Dr. Stokey proved through his research and through his documentation that not only American Sign Language but probably all sign languages are real languages and he proved this showing that the grammar and the structure was just as sophisticated in sign languages as it is in spoken languages. Now we all take that for granted today but believe me, in Dr. Stokey's day, back in the 60s, 1960s, that was not understood. Even the most loving and intelligent people really didn't think of sign languages as real languages before Dr. Stokey's work. So Dr. Stokey came out with his research in the late 1960s and early 70s. And so I was doing my invention of Sutton Dance writing um, in the early 70s. And I knew nothing about Dr. Stokey because I was in the dance world. I had no connection with the sign language, linguistics world at all. Uh, of course not. Nonetheless, we were kind of uh, in a similar uh, time period where Dr. Stokey influenced the research that was being done at the University of Copenhagen on sign language. And I was over at the Royal Danish Ballet teaching dance writing. 
And these researchers at the University of Copenhagen asked me to come. I gave a talk. I showed them Sutton dance writing, which looks a little different than sign writing, but you can look at Sutton dance writing right now by going on the web. Go to www.dancewriting.org. It's all one word, dance writing. Okay, so going back to this, they were doing a research project on comparing hearing person's gestures and um, uh, deaf people and their gestures. So they needed to have a way to write down both the hearing person's gestures and the deaf person's sign language. In this case, it was Danish sign language. So I was delighted to do that. Um, I knew I could because I wrote dance and that's the full body and I knew I could do it. It just simply was something new because the focus was different. You know how in ballet you would look at the whole body a lot, but with sign language it's more the upper body, isn't it? And mostly hands and face and movement of the arms and some upper body movement, of course, and role shifting. But dance, you know, you're moving all around the stage, you're throwing people over your head, you know, it's a bit different. <laughs> So I accepted the job. I, I was thrilled. So they gave me this, you know, consultant job and they gave me this office. Woo! And I was in a Danish office and they handed me this video machine. And in those days, it was different than it is today. Very um, much more complicated. But I had this machine and they gave me videos of hearing people and deaf people conversing with each other. The hearing people were obviously speaking Danish, but their body language was there while they spoke and the deaf people were really signing. I looked at that and I said, my gosh, this, these deaf people, they have a language. This is a language. I knew it was a language. I was learning Danish at the time and was becoming fairly fluent, at least conversationally. And I spoke Danish throughout this experience. Um, and I knew what it felt like to learn a second language, therefore. And I, I just looked at this and said, wow, this is a third language I need to learn when I saw Danish sign language. I, what a beautiful language. Now, it just happened that Dr. Stokes' book was sitting on my desk over here because they had given it to me. But it wasn't until later that I grasped who he was and what he had done. So I came to this from another world, from a world of movement writing. And I was a movement notator is what I was. And through this experience of watching video and writing what I saw and putting it down on paper, I developed two things. I developed what I call Sutton Movement Writing which is a general movement writing system that writes all gesture and all movement of the body and the facial expressions, whether it is dance or sign language or anything, okay? So that's the first thing. And you can visit uh, www.movementwriting.org and you can see the movement writing system. But also from this came a very specific writing of the sign language, and I called that sign writing. So we have Sutton Movement Writing, and then we have five sections now of Sutton Movement Writing. There's Sign Writing for Writing Sign Languages, Dance Writing for Writing Dance Movement, and then we also have Mime Writing for Writing Classic Gesture and Mime, like Marcel Marceau, you know, Performance Mime. Um, and then we also have sports writing. We've been writing ice skating, we've been writing gymnastics, writing skateboarding, wow. <laughs> and that's ongoing. And then we have a gesture analysis section, which I call science writing, but it's really the scientific analysis of certain gestures. For example, we wrote the movements of people axing wood um, uh, to carve boats to create Norwegian, um, you know, the Viking ships that were, that, that was a study to see how they did the body movement of the strokes because they wanted to try to understand how the Vikings made such glorious, sleek boats. So you see, movement writing can be applied to any kind of gesture analysis. But it was the sign writing that I fell in love with. The writing of the Danish sign language is so beautiful, of course, and so is Brazilian sign language, which I know you call Libris. All these sign languages are just gorgeous languages. So after writing some of that, I went to my boss at the University of Copenhagen, Lars van der Liet, as I said. And I said, you know, Lars, this is so exciting. I'm getting into this. Um, I like writing Danish sign language. I think the writing of it like this could become the written form for the language. I can see they don't have a way to read and write Danish sign language yet. And, and why don't we try to do that? We could go to deaf clubs and encourage it. 
And he said, oh, Valerie, you know, this is just for research, and I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I really, this is Lars talking, he said, I really don't think that this would be possible to really write the language, and what's more, would anybody really want to? I mean, you know, not that many people know about sign language here in this country. I said, yes, but the deaf do. <laughs> I, I want you to know we're great friends, Lars and I, and it all worked out, because later on, when I came back with a full writing system for sign languages, and they started to be used in the Danish school system, um, Lars uh, introduced me at a speech and said, you know, I told Valerie once way back in 1974 that this just wasn't possible to write sign language. And boy, I, I, you know, now I see it really is, and this is exciting. So he was a very sweet man to understand how things evolve. Because I got the fire in my heart. I got excited. And so after doing the job for them, um, we, they published a a research job on um, comparing the hearing people's gestures with deaf people's gestures. I went back to the United States, uh, where I live, my, my homeland, in California, and I contacted American Sign Language people. Now, this was new for me. I had never been involved with the deaf community before. I was a dancer. And I come back home from Denmark with a research tool that I thought could be applied to writing daily sign languages. And you can imagine the... Um, the amazement. I mean, I, I got some deaf people together, and mind you, I didn't know sign language yet, but I got interpreters, and I was so excited. And um, I, I did end up getting a whole staff of deaf people together. We had 10 native signing um, American Sign Language deaf uh, workers. The first uh, deaf person I hired was Lucinda O'Grady Batch, who is still working with us occasionally to this day, who lives right in the area where I live in La Jolla. We're still good friends and it's exciting that all these years, and we're talking about way back, that's, this was in now 1981, okay, time goes by, but anyway. <laughs> and a lovely lady named Nancy Ellen Wu, who later became Nancy Romero, and Nancy Romero still works with us in our organization and has written, you won't believe this, the whole New Testament written in American Sign Language now because with sign writing. She's a, an ASL interpreter, so God bless Nancy. So we have all these lovely people who still work with us to this day. But way back in 1981, Nancy founded the first project. It was the Sign Writer newspaper, and it was a great big tabloid. And we tried to write articles in American Sign Language, and nobody had ever done this before, and nobody knew how to write their language. So I handed them the symbols that you can see behind me, the sign writing symbols, and I assumed, hey, you know, they're native to their language, they'll know what to do. So I just handed them the symbols and said, start writing. <laughs> it wasn't that easy. Did you know that just because you know a language, you just don't automatically read and write it? It's something that you need to be trained in to think about because we can speak a language or sign a language and not necessarily think about ever reading and writing it, right? But it can be done. So through that project, Nancy and I got together. We started working with all the deaf staff. Everybody got together and said, let's do this, let's do that. And we ended up publishing 20 pages of written sign language every three months in a tabloid size, kind of big size newspaper. And it was in American Sign Language and sometimes in Danish Sign Language. And there were different articles. Oh, we had some great articles. And from that experience in 1984, we were doing this all by hand, by the way, because at the time we had no computer program. So it was a lot of work to do it by hand. You know, if nothing more, that was part of the reason why we stopped the newspaper in 1984. It was so much work to write 20 pages by hand. So um, Lucinda O'Grady Batch and another deaf um, worker on the newspaper who had been our manager for a while, her name was um, Ina Schroeder, Miriam Ina Schroeder. Uh, the two of them requested the following of all of us. They said, now that we've written our language for four years like this, we find that, number one, we want to change over from receptive writing, which is writing what you see somebody else sign, and we want to change over to expressive, where we're writing what we sign, what we see, our own hands, from our perspective, because we're not writing what somebody else says, we're writing what we're expressing. So that was a big change, and we did. We changed from receptive to expressive in 1984 because the deaf staff requested that. Then the next thing they requested was they didn't want to read and write from left to right. They wanted to read and write going down, vertical. Why? Because we're writing, you know, here's your head, 
here's your body. Let's say I do this. It feels good to read down and then continue to read down. This is very deaf and very natural to the language. And if anybody just says, oh, but I want to go left or right, it's okay. But you're going to miss out on grammar and structure because we developed a wonderful way to capture the nuances of the grammars of sign languages because we're writing down. We can show role shifting in lanes, and it's very important. So that's the next thing that they wanted and requested and got. <laughs> and the next thing was, even though we had a stick figure, we could also write without it, and they chose to write without the stick figure. They threw out the stick figure. So you can see with the writing in behind me here, these symbols there are written without a stick figure. So those were three things that um, our deaf staff requested. Then everybody took a break for two years or so because we had to develop the Sign Writer computer program, which was developed by Richard Gleaves, and I worked with him every day. And it turned into the Sign Writer program for the Apple IIe, Apple IIc, and also for Sign Writer DOS. And we had it in 17 languages, I'm so proud to say, including Libris. Yeah, that was back in like in the mid-1990s. Um, I met, this is the history of Brazil now with sign writing. I got a wonderful contact because I started to do websites. Now, mind you, I'm no great computer expert. By this time, in the mid-1990s, um, we already had the personal computer, didn't we? And we already had the SignWriter DOS program. And we had already started what we called the Deaf Action Committee for Sign Writing, the DAC. That started in 1988 with Lucinda O'Grady-Batch and myself. And from that point on, the deaf people were giving me all kinds of advice, and our writing system got better and better and better and better. And I'm going to tell you something. No writing system stands still. Real writing systems that are really used are not just one person like little old me. It is everybody using it that influences it, and they tell us what they need. And the only reason why sign writing is such a success, and it is, is because I not only listen, we do what people ask. We find out if there are enough people who ask for the same thing, huh, then we know that it's got to be true. And instead of saying, oh, no, we don't do it that way, we don't want to do it that way, instead we say, okay, we're going to be flexible and try that because it's pretty clear that's what's happening anyway. You might as well go with the real people who are doing it, right? <laughs> so everybody had to adjust. We all had to get used to expressive, going down in vertical columns, and we had to get used to no stick figures and a bunch of other stuff. Okay, so now imagine this. I finally do my first website. Yay! That was in 1996. I got the sign writing website up for the first time. That's at www.signwriting.org. Okay, still there, by the way. Kind of a big, huge site. And because I wasn't a professional web designer, and still I am not, um, it is kind of um, out of date in a lot of places and could have been better and all that. And, but hey, you know, it gives the information, and frankly, without it, I wouldn't know you. That's the truth. So it's good we did it. And one day I got a, an email from an absolute stranger, but I'm delighted he's no longer a stranger to me, and that is Dr. Antonio Carlos da Rocha Costa, at the time from Pelotas, and he was um, at a university. And he was a professor of computer science, and he wanted to do a computer program for sign writing from Brazil. And he had other people whom he worked with and students under him who could do the software. And he also knew of a beautiful deaf person named Mariana Stumpf. And Mariana learned sign writing. <laughs> and I got involved, and I loved it. And Antonio Carlos came to my home in La Jolla. We, of course, met and had a good time communicating about everything. And then he brought a bunch of stuff back to Brazil. And then they did their first internet kind of workshop where I could participate. And I was up at 3 in the morning watching Mariana Stumpf and um, Marcia de Campos de Borbos. Oh, please forgive me that I didn't say your name right. I remember it. I have it on the web somewhere. Yeah, under Brazil, if you go way down. <laughs> you go signwriting.org forward slash Brazil. You'll see oh, all kinds of icons. Keep going down to the bottom of the page. You'll see one of those first events where Mariana Stumpf presented sign writing to a group of students and I was there on the internet with her. Ha <laughs> ha! That was fun. I'll never forget it. Hi Mariana. 
So I wanted you to know that that was the beginning of sign writing in Brazil. And then from there, I got to know Dr. Honice Müller de Quadros. Again, I apologize if I didn't say the name correctly because I used to call her the American version of that, which is Ronice. Don't, don't laugh. But the point is, uh, Honice came and lived with me for a week here in my home around 1999. I even have a video of her talking about sign writing. She's this gloriously beautiful young woman when she still is beautiful and young. And she, I know, is director of a fabulous program in uh, Brazil now. And they're using sign writing. And I'm grateful for that. Thank you, everybody. Um, so uh, from there, it just spread. And what amazed me about this story is that from my point of view, I developed the sign writer keyboards and, the, and we did the Brazilian keyboard, you know, for, for Libras. And I could see it could use improvement, but Mariana told me that everybody's using it as it is and they're happy with it. So, you know, I learned that people were really using it. I, I found that to be just as, wow, they're using it. That's cool. Then, of course, I met Dr. Fernando Capavilla from uh, University of Sao Paulo. And um, I'm very grateful to Dr. Capavilla because he included sign writing in his dictionaries. And I wrote along with him the uh, forwarding section. We had kind of an introduction to sign writing symbols in the very beginning part of it. And that was a great honor. And um, the signs were written by a whole team of a bunch of people all over Brazil in sign writing. So that was also a great honor. Um, and then when the program started in the universities, I, I began to realize that sign writing was spreading in Brazil. And all of a sudden, I'd go up on Facebook, and whom do I meet but Brazilians? And they're so nice to me. I decided Brazil is a pretty special country. It must be, because you're so nice to me. Thank you. And thank you for using sign writing, and thank you for making it such a blessing. And just recently, I learned about other dissertations written about sign writing in Brazil. I didn't even know about some of them. I do know some of them, but not all of them. So if you have done work with sign writing and you'd like to contact me, you are most welcome to. My email door is always open. <laughs> and my email address is Sutton, my last name, S-U-T-T-O-N, at signwriting.org. That's easy enough. I also want to tell you all about the sign writing list. It is an email list where you can post messages to me and to other experts who use sign writing or who are teaching sign writing or are software developers. Let's say you're using SignPuddle Online, which is our current software developed by Stephen E. Slavinsky, Jr. SignPuddle is just a wonderful program. We love it. It's a very international program. It's free to use. It's up on the web. You don't have to download anything. And if you have an internet connection, there's no problem. You just enjoy writing right on the internet, posting your documents. They'll always be there. Nothing's lost. Um, it is public, it's true, but we also have private web puddles if somebody wanted to pay for that private space. But everybody uses the public free online. Why not? And it's simply wonderful to be able to share documents with people. So I don't believe in secrets. I believe in really sharing. I think the, the more people share their their knowledge, and even let's imagine you write a sign on sign puddle that isn't perfect. So what? Everybody else doesn't do it perfectly either. I mean, who is perfect? But it still gets shared, and then after a while, people learn from that. They say, hey, what about doing it this way? And so that's what we do on the sign writing list. People on the sign writing list say, hey, Valerie, I don't know how to write this sign. Can you help me? And they post a video, and we all see the video. There are like 200 people on the list, and um, they're all from different countries from 18 different countries at the moment, and they all look at the video. And somebody says, I think I'd write it this way, and they post the sign to the sign writing list in an email, written in sign writing. And they say, if you can't see this, you can see it in sign puddle. I put it at this link, and you click on the link, and you go to sign puddle, and you see how they wrote it. And then you come back and say, nah, I'd write it differently. So you write it differently in sign puddle, and then you say to the list, hey, this is my version, go look at mine. <laughs> I'll never forget there was a sign for wallet. It was a really hard sign. I can't even remember what it is now. <laughs> but it was a sign for wallet, I think, in ASL. And there must have been maybe 12 people putting in information as to what they thought and how it should be written. And I think that was really positive. So it's like research is being done right before our eyes in a casual, unofficial way. So much so that now there's a researcher named Dr. Erica Hoffman Dillaway 
from uh, Oberlin College in Ohio in the United States who has actually gotten research funding to study the sign writing list and how it is um, benefiting the world uh, by this ongoing communication that I just told you about and how unusual that is. So um, she is actually studying the sign writing list archives and finding um, the information from the conversations fascinating and considering that something to research. I, of course, feel very honored about that. The main thing is to know that we're here for you and you're going to be learning sign writing now. It's my understanding from Matson and Raquel Barreto. I want to thank Matson and Raquel for all they're doing. First of all, you know their book. Isn't it the most fabulous book in the whole wide world? And I actually mean that. I'm not just saying that. I think it's exciting. I look at this and see this from my point of view. I started writing Danish Sign Language in 1974, and I had this idea, why don't we make this into a written form for the language? And now, all the way in 2013, we have a beautiful book. And there it is, writing in vertical columns, in the expressive, just as our deaf staff asked for in 1984, after writing for four years in other ways. So we are blessed with this book. Thank you, Matson and Raquel, for creating this book and for all the work you're doing. And I hope you enjoy the course that you're taking. If you, of course, the questions really should be directed to the teachers. But if you ever do have a question to me, I'm more than glad to be a part of it. And you're, you're very welcome to contact me either, either on the list, which would be the best, because then you get all kinds of other response besides me. And it's nice because it gets recorded into the history of our archives so that it can be researched. <laughs> but you are also welcome to write to me privately at Sutton at signwriting.org. And I'd be glad to answer your questions. I also have a Facebook page and two Twitter pages. Oh boy, I sound so important, but actually I'm just learning how to use Twitter. I find it, a, frankly, a new experience. Um, Facebook's kind of fun. Um, that's just forward slash signwriting. Um, you would think it would be Valerie Sutton, but it actually just says sign writing. And that's because originally when I became a Facebook member, I didn't realize the difference between, you know, the professional pages and the personal pages, and I blended it all together. So it's really me, but it's sign writing. So um, you're welcome also to, to ask to be friends with me on Facebook. I'd love that. Or to follow me on Twitter. And Twitter is also sign writing. Um, and I'm looking at a piece of paper right now, please excuse, but I know that Madsen wanted me to ask, uh, to say a couple things. Oh, here it is. He wants to me to mention the benefits that sign writing offered deaf and hearing. Well, I'm just going to tell you the real answer to that question is a question. And the question is, how does the written form for Portuguese or the written form for English benefit you? Of course, it benefits everybody. Imagine if I want to learn Portuguese. I could use the alphabet to write Portuguese. I could look up a word. I can use Google Translate. And that gives me a written form of what I just said. And I think that's wonderful. The written form for both languages, they don't compete with each other. They are simply helping each other to translate, to communicate. Well, that's what written sign language does too. It's a way to read and write Libris. Imagine if you didn't have it. You wouldn't have a way to compare Libris with Portuguese. You wouldn't have a way to compare it with English or with American Sign Language for that matter. You could compare Libris with American Sign Language and create a research project. Hey, maybe that's your next research project you can share with me from Brazil. Comparing American Sign Language and Libris using sign writing. Did you know back in Denmark, way back, um, remember, remember I was at the University of Copenhagen in 1974? Well, 10 years later in 1984, sign writing was accepted into the Danish school system for 10 years. And at that time, <laughs> of course this is way back, that was the first school that ever tried to teach sign writing along to their deaf students. And it was quite successful. It just unfortunately it lost its funding and Denmark changed enormously. Someday I'll tell you about that. It's not really relevant to, to us because it has nothing to do with sign writing. It had to do with their attitude towards sign language. But for those beautiful 10 years, sign language was in vogue. And so, so was sign writing because it's the written form for sign language. Why not? So that was something that was a wonderful time for me was in the late 1980s in Denmark when they used sign writing in their school system. 
Um, what were the benefits that they got from that in Denmark? Um, the deaf kids learned uh, to read and write spoken Danish better. And I even went into a classroom and they had signs up on the walls, like the same sentence, written in Danish sign language, in sign writing, and written in spoken Danish in the Roman alphabet, of course. And my goodness, you could compare them. And so deaf kids were learning bilingual training in two languages equally. That's what this gives, gives to deaf and hearing. And the other thing is that we hearing people need to learn sign language, don't we? We should. And when we do, we need to have a way to read and write those signs that we learn because how in the world are we going to remember what we learn? And it seems rather unfair that in French you can go to a class and you can remember the French because you have a piece of paper with written French on it. But you go to a sign language class and there's no way to read and write it? How do you expect people to remember it? So it's good for the languages to have ways to be read and written. The sad part to the human mind is sometimes when people see something brand new, like written sign language, they say, oh dear, if I learn this, then I won't know how to read and write Portuguese. That it's either one thing or the other. The idea that deaf people would be isolated and only learn to read and write their sign language and never learn to read and write spoken language because Oh dear, it's going to compete. That idea comes up all the time. And not just in one country or another, but all countries. I am so, so surprised at it. One day I was just working in my office doing nothing to create controversy. <laughs> I get a phone call from somebody in the post office saying, I see that you're sending out a newspaper written in sign language and I have a deaf brother and I don't like what you're doing because if he learns this, he'll never learn English. I said, my dear woman, that is the last thing in a million years. He'll get excited about learning to read and write English because he's got something to read and write in his own language. It'll give him stimulation. And he'll be able to say, see, this is my language. This is yours. And look at this. We can compare it. And now I understand English much better. it would just help him learn English much better. It's right now that he's isolated because he doesn't have a way to compare his own language with English. That was really hard for her to understand. So that's one of the reasons why it's taken time for sign writing to get used in the schools is that sometimes uh, parents are frightened that their children won't learn English if they're allowed to learn anything else. So let me uh, tell you, there's no fear with this. Reading and writing is a blessing. Having everything open and free is a blessing. Let them read and write. They will find their way because they have to live in our society. They are definitely going to learn to read and write spoken language. And having a way to read and write sign language is just one more benefit. So that's what I would say helps hearing and deaf people and it helps our communication together. And also Matson asked me to uh, mention about the advances that we've made in sign language linguistics. Well, I'm going to tell you one advance. My deaf assistant is named Adam Frost, and he is born deaf, native to ASL. And Adam is um, an American, and he uh, got his degrees in different places. He got his college degree, the bachelor's, the four, first four years at a university here in California, where he comes from. But then he got his master's degree at Gallaudet University in linguistics. And now Adam is teaching linguistics and American Sign Language at um, University of California at San Diego here and also at Mesa College. And he's teaching linguistics, you know, and he presents sign writing in the linguistics course, which I get a big kick out of. Yeah. And so how does it help linguistics? Well, in the beginning, Linguists were a little skeptical because they told me they didn't think a dancer or a hearing person could invent a writing system for sign language. But I pointed out to them that actually I'm pretty neutral. I'm not the person telling anybody what to do. I just invented these visual symbols and then the symbols are applied to any language in the world. So I'm not telling anybody how to sign. I'm not telling anyone how to write their signs. I'm just saying Here's the, here are the symbols. Now you know the language. Now you apply it. And yes, there are some general spelling rules that have to do with movement and how we place the symbols with each other. That's true. There are what I call Sutton's Sign Spelling Guidelines. And I started a book on that. I've done several on them, actually, but I'm coming out with a new one now in 2013. However, that doesn't mean I'm telling linguists what to do. Not at all. They're the ones who know linguistics, and they can apply this to their research and use it as a tool to record their research also.
They can study how other people have been writing, and that just that alone is a linguistics project in its own right, to see how natural it is for deaf people to write their own language, and how do they do it, and what do they write. That in itself is a linguistics project. So I think we've had a major influence on linguistics. And recently, there's a new linguistics project starting using sign writing in the United States. It's called Sign Type, S-I-G-N-T-Y-P. You can see it on the web. It's just starting. It's at the University of Connecticut, and it's directed by Rachel, Dr. Rachel Cannon, C-H-A-N-N-O-N, -N -N, and Dr. Harry Van der Hulst, H-U-L-S-T. <laughs> and um, they got funding from the United States National Science Foundation to um, put sign writing up on the web in their database called SignType in which it's a linguistics database that is analyzing the aspects of sign languages using sign writing and they're also writing around 15 sign languages and comparing. It's very exciting. So all in all, sign writing is spreading and it's spreading with or without me. It's spreading with or without us because it's on the internet and it's free. That was my choice. I want it free and open and I know that everybody respects me and is not going to in any way ever say that they invented it. I know they're going to give me the credit we all deserve here. They're also giving me the love back. Because you know, when we love each other and we give to each other, we get it back, don't we? And that's what I have felt from everybody from Brazil. I absolutely adore all the Brazilian friends I have. Every one of them has been friendly, been warm, and been grateful. And I'm grateful to you in return because you are using sign writing. And by writing your language, Libris, you are giving a gift to the wor world further to the next generation because the more people can read and write a language, the more knowledge they have. And you're preserving these beautiful languages also. I'm sure you have dialects. Wow, you can preserve those dialects so that other researchers can carry new research forward. So enjoy your course with Matson and Raquel. I know it's going to go well. And contact me anytime. I'm looking forward to seeing your writing. And I hope you'll join the sign writing list and use Sign Puddle. Go to www.signbank.org forward slash sign puddle. Sign Puddle is S I G N P U D D L E. What does that mean? It means like a little bunch of water. You know, if you had a rainstorm and there'd be a little water left that you would walk in and go splash. <laughs> you know, children love to, they love to dance among the puddles. You know, they jump around the water and make a bunch of noise. Well, that's a puddle. But think of this like this. Think of raining sign writing symbols. <laughs> and they're coming down from an umbrella and making a splash down on earth. <laughs> and those little puddles, start out like, you know, a few signs from Brazil written in sign puddle and a few signs from the U.S. and a few signs from Nicaragua, etc. And after a while, we have a bunch of puddles of signs from different countries. And in time, it becomes a river and goes to a big ocean. In fact, I think we have a bunch of oceans already. Some of them are huge. We have an ASL Bible file that we call a puddle, but it's really a file, like a database that has almost the whole New Testament written and has a huge dictionary. And the German sign puddle is so big that they, I think they have almost 20,000 signs written in it. So our puddles are getting rather bigger than puddles, aren't they? No matter what, you can use sign puddle for free. So if you go to that signbank.org forward slash sign puddle, you'll find um, their flags. Go to the one for your country and there's one for BR for Brazil, click on that and that will take you to a little directory. And you'll have a dictionary and a literature and an encyclopedia, etc. And last, talking about encyclopedias, I have to tell you about Wikipedias. We are starting written Wikipedias in sign languages. The first one is the American Sign Language Wikipedia, and we're hoping there'll be a Libris Wikipedia soon, too. Imagine you could go up on the web, go to Wikipedia, find your Libris language, and you'll be able to read articles about the world written in Libris that connect back to the Portuguese Wikipedia. That's what we're doing with the American Sign Language Wikipedia. It connects back to the English Wikipedia. So 
our Wikipedias are still under development. Right now we have a test Wikipedia. Um, and it's kind of at a long URL, so I won't spell it out for you. But you can write to me to ask me how to get there. And in about a year or so, it's going to be posted officially on the Wikipedia site. But right now it's on a test area. And that's good. So we're hoping to have a symposium 2014 here in La Jolla, California. Maybe you'd like to come. And uh, we'd like to teach everybody how to create their own Wikipedias in their sign languages. You must be exhausted listening to me. So this is it. you got to start working now. Start studying hard. Tell me all about it. Nice to meet you. Bye.